All right, we're back. You're watching theCUBE. We're here with Jay Chaudhry, the CEO of Zscaler. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Dave, thank you. It's an honor. Uh, oh, the, the, really, the pleasure is ours. We saw you last night at your party. Uh, it's, it's awesome to see your community. Everybody wants to take pictures, <laughs> autographs, right? So <laughs> you're famous in this world. Uh, what are you hearing from customers at this show, any themes you can share with us, and any differences, Jay, from a year ago at RSA? So, so first of all, uh, it's a great opportunity to meet so many customers out here. Mm. Uh, we did two announcements at the show. One, there's a phishing report based on about two billion phishing attacks that we blocked last year. Looking at the data, it has gone up 60% year over year because phishing is a starting point to steal credentials, and then they start doing ransomware attacks. So that's one theme, because we are making sure we can protect our customers against it, and our zero trust architecture helps us. Second announcement we made was, working with Google, we actually can provide third-party access to applications from BYOD devices, because third-party Risk is growing, and that has to be done. Now, in terms of conversation, there have been so many conversations with customers. Uh, obviously, you'll expect AI being part of the conversation always these days, uh, but fear of getting breached and the business stopping because of ransomware is number one concern on every CISO's mind. Yeah, and, and so last year there was talk, there was chatter about AI, Gen AI, yep. and maybe obviously <coughs> uh, uh, attackers using AI mm -hmm. to write better phishing emails. Yep. There seems to be much more conversation this year about the exposure that AI brings and mm -hmm. thinking about how to secure <coughs> AI. That's right. How do you think about that? So, AI is a fascinating technology. Like many other technologies, it has two sides. It can help with business productivity, but it can be very dangerous. Think of a simple example. You can ask ChatGPT and say, tell me all the VPN systems this company has and what vulnerabilities do they have. It would have taken them days to collect this information. Now it's available in a matter of seconds. So identifying your attack surface, the starting point of attack becomes easy. As you said, phishing emails can be written very nicely. Then they cannot go from there. So we got to fight AI with AI. We are leveraging AI to actually analyze billions and billions of logs to actually figure out in this uh, a needle in the haystack to see if two users in this, in this company got compromised and the bad guys are trying to move to step two and three and four. So figuring out this technology is a big thing for us. But in addition to that, CISOs also want to make sure that they can securely use AI services. That has three pieces to it. One, they want to know what services are our employees going to use. CISOs aren't about stopping them. CISOs are supposed to enable business. AI is a business enabler. But it starts with where are they going. Number two, they want to control access. There are thousands of AI services. It's not just chat GPT. Which services do I want my companies to use? Here are five or 10 sanctioned ones. And number three, when they use it, they need to use it safely to make sure they don't really submit the source code of the company to say, do QA on it. And so Zscaler can do all three for our customers. Most of our large customers are using this security to what they call secure use of AI. I want to ask you about a sort of corner case, maybe it's uh, not such a corner case. Hmm. I know of situations where, because you're talking about sort of a curated, approved set <coughs> of AI. Yep. I know of, of a couple of, of times I've heard this where developers were told you cannot yep. use, uh, for instance, ChatGPT mm -hmm. in this case. Yep. But they like ChatGPT. Right. So they couldn't use it on their laptop, so what do they do? <coughs> they pull out the phone. Sure. And they pull out the app. Yep. How should CISOs handle that, and can you help? Yeah, so every large company has to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Till solar winds happen, yeah. developers had a lot of freedom. <laughs> they could download open source tools. Then everyone realized that these tools could be dangerous. 
So more and more of these kind of customers, yes, they block chat GPT or only have controlled access. Even if you download something on your phone, your source code is not going to go on your phone. So there are proper data protection solutions that Zscaler offers to make sure we protect data on the endpoint, we protect data in your email, in S3 bucket, or Snowflake, or wherever. That has to be done. Take my phone. It actually has a personal profile and work profile. When I'm doing my own Netflix or YouTube, it's on one side. My company doesn't see it, goes direct. When I'm going to access my applications, the data, it all sits in a container that's company owned. That's the right approach to do and that's what we enable yeah. with our customers. That's it. Okay, I want to ask you about the, the survey that Barclays did, uh, Socket Kalia <laughs> uh, came out. It was a couple of months ago now. <laughs> Um, and, and I mean, I think of you as a category creator. You kind of created yep. the, the sassy category. Yep. And really kind of only the pure, the only pure play yep. really out there. I think yep. that's fair. Absolutely. Um, his survey, it was a small right. end, it was only about 100, but there was two things in there. One showed momentum <laughs> for Zscaler, our data shows the yep. same. Uh, but, but the other takeaway was a market decline for the <clears throat> first time ever in <clears throat> hardware-based, appliance-based firewalls. Yep. And so I thought that was an interesting data point, something that you've been pr preaching, <coughs> predicting yep. for yep. a long, long time. It's, it's yep. finally, feels like the market's finally catching up to your vision. Mm -hmm. what, what are you seeing out there? How would you respond? You know, inertia is powerful. <laughs> Some <laughs> people keep on doing what they're doing. Yeah. That's part of our cyber issues too, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Because we are using old technologies, but hackers have no inertia, hackers move on and embrace new approaches faster. But I think part of the reason this, is happen this has been happening, uh, this means the firewall sales have stayed pretty good till recently is the following. As cyber attacks are happening. So what, the company gets breached, what do people do? The budget opens up. They had 100 firewalls, they say go and buy another 100 firewalls. Okay, the budget opens up, so a lot of companies have been buying more of the old stuff because that's what they knew. As we have evangelized the stuff, now we have over 40% of Fortune 500 companies that are customers. In fact, I have so many CIOs and CISOs who are repeat customers, not only once, not only twice, sometimes three or four times. So, it is, the awareness is going up. But also, you know, the, the data centers are going down the number of applications running, the traffic had to go down. I expect this to go down a couple of years ago. Then I learned about six months ago why it has taken longer to go down. I was talking to a CIO, he said I'm so proud that 60% of my applications have moved to the cloud and only 40% are left in the data center. I said that's good, that means only 40% of the traffic goes to the data center. He said perhaps. I said, if that's the case, probably in the past year, you should not have upgraded a single firewall, load balancers, router, or switch. He smiled, he said, I wish that were true. <laughs> now, why wasn't it true? <laughs> Even though he had rolled out SD-WAN, he was still bringing all branch traffic to the data center, then here pinning over an express route to Azure. Old approach, because that's what always done it as traffic was flowing through the data center, he's still upgrading firewalls and routers and switches. In the Zscaler world, you go direct. You don't have to go through a few choke points. As more and more customers start doing so, uh, hardware-based or uh, data center-based firewalls are bound to go down. Yeah, so they were throwing Band-Aids at the problem. Exactly. Because they always, this is the way they always it's, did it. Yes. And now, starting to realize, hey, you know, to your point, uh, uh, security budgets are going up significantly faster yes. than the overall. I would say our data shows the overall is growing about 3.4% at the mm -hmm. macro, IT spending. Mm -hmm. Security is probably triple that. Yes. Okay, sounds about yep. right, maybe even a little bit more. Yes. Okay, but it's not like you have unlimited budget if mm -hmm. you're a CISO. We're also seeing uh, IT organizations are stealing budget from other places mm -hmm. to fund Gen AI. That's true. And probably not from the security budget, clearly not from the security budget, but maybe yes. business budgets or other AI mm -hmm. budgets. That's but right. But still, th there's not unlimited budget, so you have to at some point say, can we do this smarter? Mm -hmm. It sounds like that cycle is starting to hit now. 
Yes, and also customers are tired of too many security point products. They want consolidation and simplification, but they don't want consolidation of all this to one security platform vendor. Imagine it's one vendor with all security products you depend on gets compromised. It's a bad thing. Imagine your vendor provides applications and security at the same time and gets compromised. Right. That's a bad day for you. So we think consolidation to a small number of platforms is good, but you don't want to one vendor. So we are big fans of a separate provider for EDRs, separate for identity, and we play an important role uh, to be inline policy enforcement engine. It's working, that's why when we go to CrowdStrike Falcon, we see you there, mm -hmm. we see Okta there, mm -hmm. so you guys are good partners. Yes. Having said that, I'll show mm -hmm. you some other data from our survey. Okay. The, vendor, the, the customers are not able to consolidate the number of vendors. This is, what do you expect over the next 12 months in terms of the, the number of vendors that you have installed? 51% mm -hmm. of the customers said increase, and, and tw I think 37% said stay the same, so only only 9% were able to, to actually decrease the number of vendors. This is an age old problem. And, and we asked them why, and they right. said, well, I need best of breed. Now you're best of breed. Mm -hmm. You know, those, those, the partners that we talked about are best of breed. But customers yeah. are still struggling to minimize the number of tools they have installed. How do we get out of this vicious, vicious cycle, this inertia, if you will? Yeah. So I must say, I'm a little bit surprised I was looking shocked at this, at this data. data. This because our customers that are large enterprises mm. are actually doing significant consolidation. Uh, an average Z-Scaler sale reduces about from four or five vendors down to us. We replace four or five vendors by our Z-Scaler solution. Now, I tell you, there is certainly an issue in this area. What's the issue? This is my dialogue with the CIO of a manufacturing company in the Midwest. He said budgets are tight. <clears throat> Buying new stuff is hard. But eliminating what I already have in place is much harder. He said people have emotional ties, <laughs> sense of ownership, pride. There may be five reasons to get rid of it, but they come with one corner case to keep it. Unless CIOs and CISOs take leadership and say, we need to get it off this legacy stuff. They sit out there, they linger out there. And, and that's what has to be done. The mindset change has to be driven by CIOs and CISOs, and some are doing more than others. Well see, I think you're in the minority when I saw this yes. data. I said, I have to ask Jay and George, mm -hmm. and, I, and I get the same answer from CrowdStrike mm -hmm. is, Actually, we're not seeing this. In our customer base, we're seeing the consolidation. Mm -hmm. Of course, you, you heard Palo Alto last quarter <coughs> said, uh, you know, fatigue, and you guys picked up on that, and, and so, but you're not seeing that, that fatigue is what you said last quarter. That's I right. Know, yeah, I know you, you're in a quiet period, we're not talking about financials, but, yep. but that, to me, mm -hmm. says that you're in the minority, which is the other flip side mm -hmm. of this, Jay, is this mm -hmm. is actually good news, mm -hmm. because that means there's a huge market yes. Absolutely. <laughs> for you guys. Absolutely, so. and our platform is expanding as well. Customers don't want lots of consoles out there. Right. But it is true, customers don't want mediocre point products. One of the challenges our customers are facing out there is that the legacy vendors are claiming to do all kinds of stuff. Five, six years ago, when we were out there, the traditional firewall and security vendors will say, security in the cloud, how is that possible? It's going to stay on-prem. Then they saw our adoption, then they say, oh, we can do that too. I think one of the big issues our industry is facing is customers are getting confused, largely because legacy vendors are claiming to do zero trust while they are simply bolting things on firewalls and all. Spinning a VM firewall or VM VPN, the cloud doesn't make it zero trust architecture. I just finished a long conversation with a customer. He said, help me describe the difference. It took me about 20 minutes, then the light bulb went on. And he said, huh, I thought you could do zero trust on firewalls. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're creating a false sense of security. 
Yeah, and so it's very hard for a company that, that has this massive portfolio, trying to be all things to all people, to also be best of breed. Exactly. I get the, I mean, every CEO's job is to <coughs> expand the TAM. Right. All right. You happen to create a market, you got a big tailwind, you have a lot of, yep. uh, of, of room ahead of you. Yep. You know, at some point, you know, when you get big enough, you maybe have to you know, make those decisions. Mm -hmm. We've seen it in tech yep. many, many times. Yep. But I don't see how you can be everything to everybody you and can't. best of breed at the same time. <clears throat> Absolutely, you can't. Uh, so we have been very disciplined in terms of what we want to do and what we don't want to do. I can tell you in the past years, so many years, uh, our investors sometimes have, or even analysts have said, oh, why don't you guys buy an EDR company or identity company or SD-WAN company? Say we have a North Star. I want to be the policy engine in line to do it the best way possible than anybody else. There's expansion in that area. For example, we did it for employees and workforce, secure access to applications. Then we expanded it to workloads. Workloads are some like users. They talk to internet, they talk to each other. Then we expanded, expanded the same core solution to IoT OT access. And then your B2B customers, suppliers, and partners. So there's immense opportunity for us to grow without getting into a mature commoditized market. Yeah, you feel like there's no shortage of, of market. Not for at you. all. You Not at all. That, yeah. Our customers are buying. Our presence is expanding. Jerry, I know you got a big dinner to go to. That's Thanks awesome. so much, we really appreciate your time. And uh, welcome back anytime, love to have you. Dave, thank you. All right, our pleasure. Okay, and thank you for watching, keep it right there. We'll be right back to wrap, day two from RSA 2024. You're watching theCUBE.